اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم رب سرحلی صدری و یسر لی امری و حل العقدات من لسانی یفقہ قولی السلام علیکم Previously, I have created a small video illustrating the meaning of Surah Ma'un in easy terms with practical example alluding how this Surah should affect our mentality, feelings, and actions. However, in this video, I will try to bring out a ring composition inside the Surah that I felt to be convincing enough to be shared with you. This Surah starts with an example of a person who does not believe in the Day of Judgment such a person can only rely and hold on to this worldly life because he or she thinks that there is no hereafter. However, this life is actually negligible compared to the day of judgment and the afterlife. The surah ends with an example of a person who withholds simple assistance. Such a person wants to hold on to these negligible worldly items. He or she actually thinks that this world and everything in it are permanent. But all of these are actually temporary and negligible in nature compared to the day of judgment and the afterlife. In both of these cases, the person is only concerned of this world and everything in it because he or she does not believe in the hereafter. He or she wants to hold on to these negligible things without recognizing that far more important matters are waiting for him or her in the day of judgment and the hereafter. The second ayat mentions that the person drives away the orphans. The word Fazalika indicates that the person is doing so because he or she does not believe in the day of resurrection. This is an inside feeling. The disbelief or the bad feeling that is present inside is actually causing him or her to do the bad deed which is visible outside. The second last ayat says that the person prays or does good deed in order to show off to other people. These deeds are not done in order to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but they are done so that other people think good of the person who is showing off. The bad feeling that is present inside is causing him or her to do these good deeds which are visible outside. In both of these ayats, the disbelief or the bad feeling inside the person's heart which is not visible is responsible for both the good and the bad deed which are visible in public. The third ayat mentions that the person does not encourage himself as well as others to feed the poor people. He doesn't feel good in doing good for the sake of other people as there is no immediate worldly return in these cases. The third ayat mentions that the person is heedless or negligent in their prayer. He or she either skips prayer out of laziness or reluctantly prays them with almost zero concentration. He actually doesn't feel good in doing this good deed for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he can't see immediate results out of praying or acting righteously. Both of these ayats shows the reason behind the sin. The only reason why this person is not willing to do good for other people or even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that he or she cannot find immediate benefit out of it in doing so. And all of these are fused in the middle ayat mentioning, So woe to those who pray, or destruction should happen to such a hypocrite. This is a person who does not believe in the day of judgment and try to hold on to these negligible worldly items. Either he or she thinks that this world and all of its items are everlasting or they are the only things that can benefit him or her because he or she does not believe in the hereafter. This person is neither good from inside in terms of feelings, thoughts or intentions and nor good from outside in terms of physical actions. Such kind of person should not pray in order to show off because genuine prayer would purify him or her from the inside as well as from the outside. It would improve them spiritually from inside. It would also improve their physical actions which are visible outside. Such a person turns out to be a bad role model of a Muslim who pushes other people further away from this beautiful religion, Islam. Such a wonderful ring composition can be found in this surah, with all of its ayat correlating in the ring structured strategy and fused in the middle ayat perfectly, illustrating another divine wisdom of our Creator in His marvelous book that is the Quran, 
which is the ultimate source of guidance for humanity. If you like this video, please share this to others and hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. Thanks. May Allah guide us in our thinking, intentions and actions. Ameen.